you were looking at the newest addition to the Lock Lab. This is a Stealth UL28 gun vault. Uh, before I show this off, I want to explain to you why this safe ended up here and give you a few tips on uh, what to look for when you buy your own stuff. I found this whole process very confusing. Uh, in my own case, it started about a month and a half ago. There were two break-ins on my street, uh, a couple of neighbors. One of the burglars went in through a uh, ground story window, and the other burglar kicked in a door, a, a back door and went in through a basement and ended up stealing a bunch of stuff. So that got me to thinking that, you know, given the situation with coronavirus unemployment, that maybe crime was in, uh, increasing in my area. So if you take a look at this graphic, I went to a local website, looked up uh, all of the home break-ins within two miles of my home. And you can see there's a lot of, this is just the last month. And the two that, that I just mentioned are not on this. So these are only the reported ones. So, you know, it left me a little bit curious about how bad things might truly be. So I went to the FBI uh, website, looked at their statistics, and dug down into the burglary part. And the FBI statistics showed me that the burglary in 2020 is up 42% over the same period in 2019. That's a little bit worrisome. 88% of the crimes of the burglaries were against residential homes. That makes sense. Uh, average break-in, and this is one of the first little things that's useful to us that uh, – Maybe we can, how we can protect ourselves. Average break-in only lasts about 8 to 12 minutes. So these things are more of a, you know, a dine and dash kind of thing. A just smash and grab. Break in the house, grab whatever you can as fast as you can. Get out before the cops get there. It doesn't give you the impression they're thought out very well. At least majority of them. Uh, average loss was $2,800 according to the FBI. Both of my neighbor's losses were considerably more than that. 85% uh, of burglaries are done by non-professionals. Again, this is a tip to us about how we can protect ourselves. Um, and then lastly, and this is sadly, police only solve about 13% of burglaries. So if someone burgles you, there's an 87% chance you're just not going to be getting your stuff back. And that, that's not a good thing. Uh, the FBI says the top five things that are stolen, and again, this is kind of common sense, cash. Yeah, everybody wants cash or things that can be converted into cash, like jewelry, uh, electronics of all types, laptop, computers, iPads, phones, things like that. Um, the last one is medications. And it's funny because one of the neighbors I mentioned in the uh, suffered the break-in lost a year's worth of blood pressure medication. I don't know why anybody would steal that, but I guess they just grab it and sort it all out later. And the last item, again, that can be converted very quickly into cash are guns. Digging a little bit further, I went to the American Insurance Association and dug into their statistics, and I was surprised to find that the biggest loss is not to burglary, but to fire in, in terms of homeowners' losses. And that's followed very quickly by burglary and then water damage. Water damage, not only like failed sump pumps, leaking washers, things like that, but also water damage done by fire departments. When, they're, when they come into your house with those high-pressure, high-volume hoses to put out your fire, <laughs> apparently they do a lot of damage as well. So right away, I, not only did I know I needed a safe, because those top five things are what I'd like to lock up, some of them anyway, uh, but I also wanted to protect myself uh, and my items against fire. So armed with what I thought was everything I needed to know, I went to, I went to a gun store, I went to Walmart, went to Dick's Sporting Goods, I went to a locksmith that has a display floor with a bunch of uh, uh, safes. And I got to tell you, I left all of those more confused than when I started. There were so many things that I realized I didn't know about safes. So before I laid down my hard-earned money, I decided to do a bit more research online to find out what it was I should be looking for, and how did I get a good value for my money. So let's talk about that. Since the Insurance Association said that fire was the biggest threat, I decided to tackle that area first. Uh, in my research, I found out that the Underwriters Laboratory, which is a certifying agency for a lot of electrical appliances, at least here in the United States, they also have ratings for security containers. And looking through that um, and, and what the specifications were, I was surprised to find that most of the containers that I had seen in those big box stores were unrated containers. They didn't have a UL certification at all. 
Many of them did, and the way that the ratings work are, for example, uh, there'll be a sticker on the ins right on the inside of the door, usually on the frame, and it will say something like uh, 1680 for 90 minutes. What that means is you can take that container when it's closed, uh, and you can expose it to 1680 degrees Fahrenheit for 90 minutes before the internal temperature will get up to 350 degrees, which is a critical temperature. That's the temperature at which paper starts to ignite. So if it says a uh, 30 minute rating uh, for 1200, obviously you can expose it to 1200 degrees for 30 minutes before the internal temperature gets up to 350. Now paper just means normal parchment type paper. It doesn't mean currency. Not that I have a lot of currency, but if you do, uh, currency has been heated. Uh, treated against heat. So it can get up to 451 degrees before it starts to ignite. I don't want to take that kind of risk. The bottom line here is that if I wanted it to last a long time against very high temperatures, it was going to cost me a lot of money. The bulk, the size and weight of the, of the safes would get larger and larger and the internal compartments would get smaller and smaller. So what I decided to do is call the experts. I called up the Fairfax County Fire Department. And they were very kind enough to punch in my address. And what they told me is that there's a fire hydrant. And I never really noticed this. There's a fire hydrant located one house away, just one house away, which told them that they'd be able to uh, pull up, hook up, and no matter how engaged the fire was, if it was fully engaged or just getting started, for sure they'd be able to have it out within about 15 or 20 minutes. Probably with a lot of damage to my house from water, but they would be able to do it. The response time, again, they're not too far away, was between 10 and 15 minutes at the outside. So he recommended that I find a safe rec rated somewhere around 30 minutes at 1,000 degrees. So I kind of got a little bit of help, but that's what I was going to be looking for. I also wanted to look into break-in. How long would it take to break in? And Underwriters Laboratory also has ratings for that. Again, I was surprised that many of the containers, and I'm going to call them cabinets, that I saw in the big box stores were, again, unrated. You could usually tell those, or at least I could, because they were very light gauge metal, usually 16 to 18 gauge, very thin, almost like a, like a school locker kind of thing. They all weighed less than 200 pounds, so I guess you get what you pay for. Those were totally unrated, and I felt like, you know, with a screwdriver, I could probably break into a lot of those. The first UL rating is something called RSC, which stands for Residential Security Container, and it's also known as TL5, which is tool resistance for up to five minutes. Now, those are tools in the hands of, of a professional, and it includes power tools. And so a container with an RSC rating, or same thing, TL5 rating, it will resist a determined professional equipped with power tools for at least five minutes. So I thought that was pretty substantial. Uh, by no coincidence, uh, at that level, the, the containers were much heavier. Usually they were 400 pounds and more, and the type of metal was 12 gauge and thicker. So we're starting to get up there in weight and in you know, the substantial size of these safes. There are additional ratings, but I figured out real quick I couldn't afford it. There's something called a TL5. Again, resists a uh, determined attacker with tools for 10 or more minutes. The cheapest one of those I found was $5,000, and that was without locking mechanism. And it also weighed many thousands of pounds because as you start moving up to the TL-15, TL-30, the safes become more and more massive, and they start using very heavy uh, metal and armored plate uh, around the outside of them and on the door. So I knew real quick I was looking for the RSC slash TL-5. So this little exercise narrowed things down for me. Now that you've narrowed down the number of safes that you have to look at based on your choices for the fire rating and for the break-in rating, it's time to take a look at some design elements of the safe and particularly the door. I saw a lot of variation in the designs uh, and the security of these doors. This is a great place for manufacturers to cut corners without most uh, consumers ever knowing it. So again, what you are not looking for is a keyed lock. These are usually only found in the lowest quality of cabinets, and I don't think that anybody would even consider that. I mean, we're all lock pickers. We know how easy those are to defeat. So we're looking for, at a minimum, a UL-rated combination lock. Now, one thing they don't advertise is something called a relocker. It's not in every safe, and so be sure to ask for it. And here's what a relocker is. It's basically a lock mechanism disabler. 
and it will only ever be triggered if someone does a physical assault on your safe. So if someone attacks your vault door with, say, a hammer or a pry bar, or they tip your safe over violently and attempt to drag it away, the locker, the relocker, will detect that attempt, and it will lock and disable the locking mechanism. At that point, even if you have the right combination, you won't be able to open it. You'll need a locksmith to come in and disable the relocker. But it's a great piece of insurance. Just be sure to ask and make sure your safe has it. You're also looking for some hard plate protection. A lot of criminals might try to punch a hole in the front door to access the locking bolts. Um, hard plate protection will slow them down for that. Great piece of thing. A lot of, to ask for. Make sure that you have it. Uh, they usually don't advertise that. The last thing to look for on your uh, design element to look for on your front doors will be um, locking bolts. Now, there's two kinds of locking bolts. There's your fixed locking bolts and live locking bolts. Now, a fixed locking bolt, when the door is open, you can generally see these on the hinge side of the door. They're bolts that stick out, and when you close the door, those big bolts neatly fold behind the frame. And so even if you cut off the hinge from the outside, that side of the door is still going to remain secure, held in place by those fixed locking bolts. So the more you have and the thicker they are, the better off you're going to be. There's also live locking bolts that pop out when you turn the lock handle, and they work just like the fixed. As soon as you turn them, they pop up and behind the frame and hold the door closed. So it'll greatly resist prying attacks if you have the right bolts, and we'll talk about that. Most cabinets that I saw, though, and again, I'm calling them cabinets, didn't have locking bolts. They had between zero and three locking bars pretty pathetically thin metal and you could easily pry those open almost with a screwdriver so I think you'll you'll know those when you see them. When you get up to the RSC or the TL5 category which is kind of where I'm focusing there's, there are somewhere between three and ten bolts a mixture of fixed and live bolts and the thickness in the models I was looking at measured somewhere between one half of an inch and one and a half inches of solid steel so again the thicker they are and the more of them there are, the more secure your door will be. The bolts should also be located on all four sides of your door, not just the hinge side and the lock side, also the top and the bottom. So make sure that you have that, that way you rule out that as a source of weakness of your door. One of the things you want to pay attention to when you take a look at the door construction is the fit between the door of the safe and the frame of the safe. Ideally, there'll be just a little bit of jiggle when you try to shake the door. You really want a little bit of play in there just in case there's difference in expansion rates between that heavy steel door and that heavy steel frame. It might lead you to believe that there's no seal on the inside of there. Or worse, you might, open, there might, you might not detect any jiggling and then when you open up the safe, you find some kind of silicone or rubber seal or even worse, weather stripping to hold that door firmly. The problem with that, of course, is that in a fire, that silicone or rubber or foam will always melt. And when that melts, it's going to leave a nice wide gap for all kinds of contaminants to get in there, uh, for smoke, heat, uh, and as, as well as water and steam when those firemen show up and start spraying everything down. So the cheaper manufacturers always seem to use silicone because it looks good and it leads the consumer to believe that it's a good fit. What you're really looking for, again, not all manufacturers will have this because it costs a little bit more, is something called fire seal. The door will still jiggle, so it'll fit the way you want it to. Fire seal looks a lot like a magnet. However, when you heat it up, uh, it expands a lot like those silly snakes we used to play with as kids. Uh, when it detects heat, it expands, it fills that gap, and it doesn't let any of the heat or contamination, steam or water from the fireman's hose infiltrate your safe. So pay attention to the seal of your safe, and you might end up saving some of your precious gear on the inside. Well, we've come full circle. We're back where we started with the Stealth UL28. Um, what did I get for my money, and why did I get this one? Well, it weighs 530 pounds. Took three of us to wrestle it into place, so no thief is going to be picking this up and walking away with it. 12-gauge uh, steel all around in many places, a double or even triple thickness, as well as all the insulation that's in there. On the outside, it's got this cool-looking black crinkled matte finish. Um, on the front of the safe, I have a UL rated. It's an NL, a very popular brand made in Italy. Uh, 9-volt powered UL rated digital lock uh, and also has an internal relocker. 
On the front of the door, you really can't see it, but there's a hard plate protecting all the locking mechanism. Uh, the entire safe is rated, uh, UL rated, RSC or TL5, take your choice, it's the same rating. Uh, in terms of fire protection, I got a little bit more than I bargained for. This one came rated one hour against 1200 degrees. Um, in terms of locking bolts, I ended up with a total of 12 locking bolts on this safe, each of them measuring one and a quarter inch of solid steel. On the hinge side, I have five fixed solid steel locking bolts, and then all the rest around the, around the perimeter, I have five on the lock side, and then one on the top, and then one on the bottom. Again, all measuring one and a quarter inch solid steel. This door is not going to be falling off. Inside of the door, it comes from the factory stock with this uh, Molly organizer and everything that you see. There's six pistol cases, uh, one three rifle magazine case, and I think it's three pouches to, just to carry miscellaneous stuff. So kind of a nice add-on to stay organized. Um, the entire safe internally is fully carpeted. So if you put delicate items in there, rifles or optics or anything, nothing's going to get banged up or scratched on the side. No bare metal showing at all. Inside are industry standard adjustable shelves. They are all removable if you don't want any shelves or if you want to add additional shelves. It's really easy to do on that track system. One nice feature about this is that it has a power outlet in the bottom on the right side. It has three 110 volt outlets so you can plug in. In my case, I've got a golden rod to keep the humidity down inside of there. So if I open the door and you know look at my stuff and drool and breathe on it, that golden rod will evaporate all the moisture. You could put air circulators, things like that. That power connector also has two USB plugs. If you have, for example, an air circulator that's low voltage, five volt, a little fan, you can plug it in there as well. Or if you want to charge up radios or phones or anything else, you can put it inside the safe and charge that up as well. Unlike most of the kits, this one does come with a bolt down kit and ready to bolt down. These caps on the bottom simply remove and it's already pre-drilled. All you do is you mark it, you drill the holes, it comes with these molly bolts in a plastic bag and all the tie-down bolts as well. So kind of a nice feature, you bolt it down, put the cap back in place, and definitely nobody's gonna be trying to slide that safe away. Now I mentioned this is only controlled to 350 degrees internally. Um, a lot of items are more sensitive than that. For example, there are heat sensitive items that start to show damage at 150 degrees. Like if you have old photographs, so you got 35 millimeter slides, or maybe you inherited some old eight millimeter, 16 millimeter movies, or if you do your backups of your computer on CD or DVD, hard drives, USB sticks, if you got cameras or other electronics, that stuff won't take 350 degrees. The peak temperature on that is about 150. So, let me show you how I'm addressing that as well, because I'm going to be storing some of that stuff. Well, believe it or not, our solution is manufactured by Masterlock. Um, they own Sentry Safe, believe it or not. This is a safe that I bought off of Amazon. It costs $54, and it is UL rated for 30 minutes at 1600 degrees. So what I'm going to do is take my delicate items and put them inside of this safe and then put this inside of the other safe. So basically double safe. I'm not even going to bother to lock this sentry safe. I'm more using it for water protection and the added thermal protection for my sensitive items. So there you go, guys, the Stealth UL28. Uh, I found mine on Amazon for uh, $1,499 delivered to my door. Um, and they're still listed that way. They make other models as well. If you need something smaller, they make a UL14, sells for $1,100. And they also offer this massive UL50, uh, uh, sells for $2,000. Again, all those are delivered to your door by Amazon. Anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. Stay safe. <laughs> Get it? Stay legal. I think most of you realize I'm not going to be giving away my new safe, but I am going to be giving away a brand new Swift Vault 2. This is the biometric handgun safe. I reviewed it, oh, I don't know, uh, about six weeks ago. They sell for about 135 bucks on Amazon. This will be the free giveaway this week. And if you want to know how to register for the free giveaway, stick around. I'll tell you how to do it. Thanks, guys. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway, purple band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you, let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys.